Hello everybody! Today we're going to be finding out how to rig that jolly old uh, spline and vine that you saw just there. So, uh, this is a plant that my good friend Eddie's modelled for me, so I've ordered two stuffing. Now, first of all, pop into wireframe mode and go along to the front view, just going to make it an awful lot easier. In the modelling tab, go along to create nerves primitive and we'll just have a plane. Now, scale this up so it matches the arm or the vine, whatever it is that um, you're trying to rig. And then maybe you've got a cool tentacle creature going on somewhere. There we are. That's about the right size, what I'm wanting. Um, just going to make sure. Perspective view, that's great. Then, um, if you go to surfaces and rebuilds, you can make sure it matches your specifications particularly. Now, number of spans on the U. That's the number going across horizontally, and I'd like 21, because that should give us the right number um, for a good de uh, deformation. And also, yes, yeah, so it's an odd number, so you can have a controller at the start, end, and middle, potentially, um, which gives you a good level of control. So, in the FX tab, N her, going to create her. Remember, the U count is 21, because that's just the number of divisions that we've got. We want it set to NURBS curves. So in each one of those, we're going to have a follicle, and the follicle is going to drive the deformation that we want. So just create hairs. There we are. Looks like a lot, but we're going to delete the nucleus, and we'll delete the output curves, so suddenly they get trimmed down to those little stumps. Um, also, we don't care about the curved loops. We've deleted those. And these are just these are just going to bloody well get in the way if we don't get rid of them. So I'll right, delete all you guys now. I just want the follicles. Because what makes this such a lovely rigging technique um, is that once you skin the joints to it, the follicles, they bend with physics, and then your joints will bend with physics too, and it's great. Um, <laughs> really is. Uh, so, you got those. I'm going to line that up with my tentacle there, sorry. Uh, go to rigging next, if you may. Create a joint. Just be in front view, I don't know why. Press enter, there we are. And going to duplicate this until I have 21, so I'm just pressing shift D at this point. There we are, it's grand. And I've got Comet downloaded on this computer, which is beautiful. Just helped me rename things quickly. If you don't, um, I'll leave a link to Comet in uh, the description below. Because it just saves you an awful lot of time. R Vine Joints. There we are, I'll just rename these. Have a lot of things going on soon. We'll need to know what they are. Uh, so I select uh, this follicle, <laughs> the master. Then I select the servant, this joint. Uh, in the rigging tab, I want to parent constrain these. Uh, make sure maintain offset is clicked off in this case because we can make sure that the joints just pop to their selected follicles. This could be fantastic. There we are. Master servant. Now I'm probably going to fade the video out at this point because you don't need to see me doing all these. There are 21 of these. A lot of repetition. Uh -huh. There we are. So I've got um, all the joints parent constrained. It's fantastic. And what I want to do is I want to have drivers. So they're easy to select and they give me something to skin to the nerves, the nerb surface that we just created. So I'm going to select this one, this one at the stump of the arm, the armpit of the plant. Um, Shift D to duplicate. Oh, I didn't want the follicle selected as well, sorry, there were. Shift D to duplicate. Now, if I delete this parent constraint, because I don't need that anymore, I'd rename this real quick as Vine DRV for driver. One, there we are, in attribute editor. Let's turn that radius to one up there so we can actually see it. Do the same with the one at the end. Um, Shift D, delete that little old parent constraint, not needing that anymore. That's going to be your fifth driver, DRV5. Again, I want a radius of one, so it actually stands out. Um, you go along. I mean, you have as many controllers as you want. Um, I'm going for five here. I don't get too carried away. Um, find five works pretty well. I've done this ring a couple of times in practice. And, um, yeah, five, five works the best so far. If you do it a different way and it works better, please tell me, because um, I'd love to know. Um, four, there we are. Radius one. Fantastic. 
Ugh, I didn't put that radio clock. I'm such an idiot. Uh, sorry about that. Then I'll select this is too much in the middle here. Shift D. Beautiful. And it's gonna be my driver too. And this will give me maximum control. They're in these positions. That'd be great. Oh jeez. One um, <laughs> that was gonna be a big controller. So now I'm going to select the master and the servant. So that's your driver joint and the joint below it, directly below it, that you want to constrain. Um, but this time, click Maintain Offset. They're in the right place. They're in the same orient because you duplicated them from the joint below. So the orient hasn't changed. That's all perfect. Just want to keep that as it is, really. But we want to make it so the, the driver joints control the joints below. Now, because you couldn't really put this in a game engine because um, they're not part of a hierarchy. But I'll show you in another tutorial. How to do that? This works perfectly for like just movies, um, whatever. So there we are. I'm controlling those now. And essentially, what we want to do is we want to create controllers for the driver joints. Again, I've got Comet, which <laughs> it's got loads of uh, nice options. Uh, a cube there. You have to try really hard to do a cube from the nerves primitives. Um, I really would say get Comet just because it saves so much more time. I'll rename that to um, R Fine C N T R L five. There we are. Modify freeze transformations. Comet shapes cube R vine C N T R L four modify freeze transformations. I mean you, you get the gist. Uh, vine C N T R L three modify freeze transformation. It'll all make sense in a second if it's not quite coming together for you now. Oh jeez, don't want a square. No, no, no. Never want a square. Uh, cube, there we are. Uh, mine. C N T R L two. Beautiful. Modify. Freeze transformations. Yes, sir. And comet shapes. Cube. R. Mine. C N T R L one. Modify. Yes, sir. Freeze transformations. Beautiful. So, what are we going to do? And it's exactly the same thing. Master, my square, servant, my circle. Apply. 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 Going on down. So, there we are. See my controls. Apply. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to parent these on down the chain so that when you move the base controller, um, that's going to drag your whole tentacle with it. Otherwise, it's going to make placing a little bit difficult. Uh, so just parent these up. I'm shift selecting the controllers and then pressing P. Yeah, P to parent. It's lovely. We can have a look at this in the perspective view now. There we are. And if you look, I move that. Oof. All my constraints are working beautifully. Can I just turn this back to normal? Yeah, great. So, I've got me drivers. <laughs> there we are. Uh, and what you want to do is you want to skin those to the NURBS plane. Um, skin, bind skin options, select a joint's closest distance, max influence is two because they only have two joints either side, uh, bind skin. Now I select the actual joints, the ones below it, the 21 that we've got for maximum control, and then shift select, um, you know, the geometry you're going to bind it to, bind skin, this time I don't want uh, closest distance, I want a heat map, because heat map's good, heat map's really nice for geometry, um, ideally, yeah, 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 we are, see, um, got a nice rotation on there, for your spline, also, wiggly wiggle, it, do, it does a lot of cool stuff, uh, this, I think for a cartoony rig, it's, I saw the bee's knees, um, so far, at least, we'll try and find different ways of doing this. There you are. You can reach some nice shapes with it. But, because you don't have an IK handle in there, there's um, no IK curve to select in the node editor to give you a squash and stretch. Now, I don't know how much you've been experimenting with squash and stretch at home, but, um, you know, most tutorials tell you to do it with an IK handle. So, if you don't have that, what do you do? 
you go create create measure tools distance tool now this this bad boy is fantastic in the node editor for getting around all sorts of um, issues um i'm pressing v to snap and i'll click on the joint at the start of the chain and the joint at the end of the chain because this gives me the distance of the arm uh but the distance is going to be changing when you know you drag the tentacle in and out so you select the locator at the end and then shift select the control at the end Peter parent, that's great. So that's going to move with it. And also, in case you move the rig around, you want to select the locator at the top of the arm. Um, shift select, you know, the controller at the start of the arm. Peter parent. Now, bear with me a second. Because uh, make sure in your outliner you display shapes. Because you're going to want the distance dimension shape one. You select that. Go to Windows Node Editor, the beauty of the Node Editor. Uh, press this little button, and you can see all the connections going in and out of it. I'm going to have a multiply and divide node, so you press tab whilst you've clicked on the Node Editor. Molt, so that should be enough to get it up. There we are. Multiply and divide. Now we're going to call that one difference, because essentially what controls squash and stretch is 1 divided by the square root of the change along the x axis which is um, when you drag it out, the, the stretch. And then the squash, we're going to feed 1 divided by the square root of the change into the other two axes, so the scale on the y and the z axis. To work this out, you just need a series of nodes connected, and they'll do the whole bit for you. So on input 1, input 1x, one I'm going to have distance. And then to calculate the difference, to divide. So we're going to divide the input, which is the distance right now, by the distance when it's at rest, which is the same as what it is now. So I'll just type in 5.164. That's fantastic. And now remember, press copy tab. We can make sure this is working. Uh, the distance should change whenever um, I move this controller, because it'll move the locator with it. That's my. There we are, see? That's changing, that's no longer 5.164. That's doing exactly what we want it to. So, carry on. Press tab, I want another multiply under that now. You're going to want three of these, all in all. Um, so this is going to be the R spine square, square root stretch. So R spine SQR stretch. This is going to work out the dis the difference, sorry, square root of the difference. So the output, which is 1 right now because it's 5.164 divided by 5.164, which is 1, um, to the power of 0 0.5, which is the square root. It's quite nice to know. And then tab, this is your final multiply and divide node, I promise. Um, and we're going to call that one spine inverse stretch divide or spine in stretch div to be really beautiful about it. There we are, what a lovely word. Um, you want to feed that into input 2x. Input Output x goes into input 2x, which looks roughly like this, and then you want to divide 1 by that. So I want to divide by 1 at the moment, which isn't particularly interesting, but it's going to give us some good results when there's actually stuff going on. Uh, but of course, you need to feed it into all your joints. So it scales along the Z and the Y axis of said joints. So select your main ones, not your drivers now. Just select the 21 joints you've got in the arm, the ones that are skinned to the actual geometry. Select those in the outliner, um, with shift click. And then middle mouse button drag these into the node editor. There we are. That's all of them. It's quite a few. And I'm going to show you the first couple and then fade out because you don't want to see me do 21 of this. It's very repetitive. Output X to scale Y and scale Z. I nearly said Z, but I'm British and I, 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 I can't. Um, I'm not American, I'm sorry. I can't pretend. Um, so scale... Y and Z are being affected by this. Oh, boom. There we are. 
Uh, and now your node editor should look something like that, but hopefully laid out a little bit neater. We've got it feeding into every one of the joints. So if I select my N2 controllers, look at what we've got. We've got a beautiful amount of stretch going on there, beautiful amount of squash, because as I drag it along the x-axis of the joints here, it's um, inversely scaling the Z and the Y. So there we are. I mean, you don't have to rely on feeding the um, the IK handle curves into the node editor because that's what you traditionally do if you're doing um, an IK leg or something, um, you know, or even you know an IK handle of any sort. But when you're using follicles, you've got to play with something else. So we can just play with the distance dimension shape in the node. It's it's as simple as that, and really you can create some beautiful shapes with it. Hopefully, this will lead to some really weird animations for my final project. Um, but look, thank you so much for watching. Um, hopefully this has been of some use and hopefully there's some ideas that you can apply to other rigs of your own. If you've got some, uh, please share them in the comments below. Uh, love to see them. Uh, or even if you just want to discuss the rig, they're very interesting. I'll happily listen. Um, I've got so much to learn, so if you've got some tips, please help me. Uh, really. Uh, but yeah, so that's all for today. Enjoy yourselves. Thank you.